Hello everyone and thank you for attending today's webinar, Zero Touch Testing for SD-WAN and 5G Unified Transport, sponsored by NetRounds. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. On the right hand side of your screen is the Q&A. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can type your question into the Q&A box and submit your questions to our speakers. All questions will be saved, so if we don't get to answer you, we may follow up by email. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the yellow Help widget. Here you can find answers to common questions. A copy of today's slide deck is available for download in the green resource list widget. Towards the end of today's presentation, we'll ask you for your feedback. A survey will pop open on your screen and will only take one minute to complete. Your feedback is extremely helpful. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available about one day after the event and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier today. I would now like to turn the event over to our moderator today, Light Readings, Hannah Newman Smart. Thanks, Becky. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining us today on this webinar, Zero Touch Testing for SD1 and 5G Unified Transport. As Becky said, my name is Hannah Newman-Smart, and I will be your moderator for today's event. Joining me today, we have two great speakers. First up, we have Patrick Kelly, Founder and Principal Analyst at Apador Research. Hi, Patrick. It's great to have you with us. Hi, Hannah. Good to be with you. And secondly, we also have Cyril Duso, who is Vice President of Marketing at NetRounds. Hi, Cyril. Welcome to the event. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here with you today to talk about zero-touch testing. I think that based on what Patrick and Netron that are hearing in the market, this topic should interest many. And so don't hesitate to ask us questions at the end. Great. Thank you, Cyril. And there will also be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So if you do have any questions for Patrick or Cyril throughout the presentation, please submit them through the Q&A widget, as Becky said. So we do have lots of great content to get through today. So Patrick, please take it away. Okay, thanks, Hannah. I wanted to start out um, for everybody's benefit just to talk about the automation market and what the appeal is in our industry towards automation. Um, it's very high today because most implementers realize that uh, new services like 5G and SD-WAN and edge computing, uh, they're almost impossible to support with traditional tools. And the reason for that is you have too many configuration parameters. Um, so if you look at cloud and what cloud brings uh, with it is uh, dynamic workloads and continuous challenges really in optimizing the services. So even automation, when we talk about automation, that, that in itself creates some challenges. Um, first and foremost, where, where do you start? How do you successfully implement it? And when does it make sense to deploy even semi-automation in, in your environment. Um, one of the terms that we've looked at that's gained traction in our industry over the past year or so is intent-based networking. And a simpler way to view intent is really to define the desired outcome that you want. So one of the examples would be to define the capacity or latency required for a service. And the benefits of intent is that the operator uh, can define the SLA and not how the SLA gets implemented to achieve it. So th this implies that the, the orchestration logic has the ability to find and implement a solution to the SLA. Uh, and that's one of the things that Cyril is going to be looking at a little bit later. So it, 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 it also implies that you are actively testing the performance of the network, the service, and the applications themselves. So our, our focus today really in this webinar is to look at the automation of the service turn up um, and also on a long-term basis, the assurance of that service. So our, our aim really at the end of this webcast is to provide you, the listeners um, that are on the service delivery teams and the operation teams with the insight and the proven deployment cases to quickly confirm for example, if SD-WAN or wholesale transport services have been configured properly before your customers even start to use the service. 
So the, the, the business outcome really is to avoid disruptions in the service launch, but also to deliver better SLA guarantees and avoid uh, some of the unnecessary truck rolls. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later. Um, over to you, Hannah, for, um, we've got a poll question to get the audience started. Thank you. Um, yeah, so here is our first poll question for today. So um, what is the business driver for attending this webinar? Um, the options we have are assuring end-to-end -end quality of services, application and transport, accelerating time to market for new business service launch, and reducing OPEC savings on truck roll and dispatch to customer site. I'll just give the audience a few moments just to get their votes in. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just take a look at the results. It looks like we've had quite a few people vote now. Okay. So we have almost 62% for assuring end-to-end -end quality of services, um, almost 21% for accelerating time to market, and 17.5% for reducing OPEX. Patrick, is that the, the outcome that you expected? Yeah, I, I actually um, agree with the audience responses. I think you know, there's a bias um, more towards assuring N and QoS, and um, a lot of that's driven by some of the things I'll talk about a little bit later, which is you know around traditional assurance tools and their effectiveness. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that lack of visibility. Um, Cyril, you 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 have any uh, input? on uh, the results? Yeah, I think I, I completely agree. I think it's, it's very tricky to uh, measure end-to-end -end quality. And with the transformation that the networks are going through, it makes it even harder. And I think you're going to cover some of it, and we're going to talk about it in uh, the winner. So not surprised here. OK. OK, great. I'll, I'll take Patrick, over I'll here. Over um, great. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, so I talked about traditional assurance tools and their effectiveness. One of the things we looked at is if you look at zero-touch testing, it applies to the service and the application. So as Cyril pointed out, new services, they're, they're elastic, meaning that they scale to balance the demand with, with the available resources. Um, but increasingly, they're becoming more on-demand. So if, if you're an implementer uh, and doing a service launch, um, one of the things you're thinking about is how do I make this easier uh, in an on-demand world, uh, which cloud brings to us. Um, the old methods and tools were designed for fixed network and compute capacity. So as a result, service assurance tools are used um, <clears throat> that were used in the past fail to satisfy the business requirements of cloud-based distributed workloads. Um, and one of the things uh, that most people are familiar with, uh, this term FCAPS, which is Fault Configuration Activation Performance and Security, that was really designed for workflow tasks that address each function in the service lifecycle. So in many cases, the system operated in a silo, and it was using its own data, its own uh, models, polling engines. And so the, the result is that you had manually intensive handoff um, from, you know, for example, planning teams to service activation teams, ultimately to the operations teams that would support the long-term service. So you have a lot of friction in this process. So that, that old construct, if you will, um, we don't believe it's gonna work in the telecom services of the future. And uh, if, I, you know, if I just move on and, and we dive, you know, expand a little bit deeper into the silo challenge, which in my opinion still exists today in many of the operators environments. Um, one of the things I talked about was uh, workflow process and people, but you also have this issue where you have to contend with the technology domain. So many services today will span the radio, the IP and the optical domains. And so, you know, back to the poll question, how do you get clear visibility and service turn up using traditional tools? Um, and, and, you know, in many cases, you have to stitch together what's in your toolbox today. 
So, um, you know, the expert on the CSP staff, they need to understand each domain and potentially all the parameters for the service to confirm that you can either certify that service before it's offered to the customer. So what we see is most organizations, you know, that are contemplating some of these newer services, whether it be an edge cloud offer, they're going to struggle at best. Um, and the net effect is that you're going to see higher OPEX and lower margins. And that's really the crux of what we want to talk to you about today. Um, once the service is commissioned, the operations team must be able to assure the service across many different technology domains. And so the key issue here is how do you isolate service impact with different data sets? Um, one option um, could be that you use an SI to perform the cross-domain integration for the service. But then you got to ask yourself, how much will this cost once you uh, implement that service? Um, and probably more importantly, when is it going to be delivered to your customer? So I kind of, um, for the benefit of this discussion, I kind of looked at the active assurance market and the evolution. Um, and when Cyril and I were talking, you know, we kind of said, okay, you know, there's sort of a time frame here. We're in the current time frame, but what's it look like, you know, four or five years out? Um, and then what are the business value you as operators are actually getting? So this, this chart that you see is more illustrative of how we see the market evolving. So today we're in a market where you have virtual test agents and they're, they're accelerating in the deployment. You have central control of these agents um, and that, that basically provides for any dynamic ads, moves, or changes in your infrastructure. But um, it's a single domain centric, not a multi domain centric implementation. That's sort of today's market. If we look at the automated test activation market, we kind of see that as a nascent market. So we're seeing service providers their mindset change from deploy and then manage to, to one where you have more synchronized deployment of the service with the management control. And this really is an acknowledgement of the challenges that I, sp I spoke about earlier. In the late stage of the market, which um, where we, we look at active assurance, um, and that, that really we think will occur some, somewhere between 2022 and 2024, um, this is going to correspond to maturity of some of these cloud services deployed at the edge. Um, we're already seeing SD-WAN deployed at wide scale, and it's moving towards mainstream adoption. And then you also have, in the current environment, accelerators, for example, work from home driven by recent events around COVID-19. Um, so all these things kind of lead to this uh, multi-stage, if you will, active assurance market evolution. Um, the net net of it is if you look at OPEX savings in the late stage of the market, we think it could approach about 90% for some services. And I'll talk about that um, a little bit later. So let's, um, let's look at where, you know, on a long-term basis, if you look at automation and how that boosts profitability and achieves improvements in, in, in customer SAT, one of the things you have to look at is the uh, the current environment. So if you look at the current situation, you compare that to the future state, and you look at things like labor. In the current situation, a high part of your, your OPEX cost is travel time to and from outside plan operations, and more importantly, time to resolve problems. As I said, Cyril will take a look at that a little more in depth um, a little bit later in this, uh, in this webcast. The other thing is um, that we kind of look at as an opportunity cost is revenue. What's, you know, what does it take um, to um, uh, resolve, um, you know, problems? And if you look at uh, downtime measured in hours to days uh, and, and its impact on SLA, the future state um, in a software-based world kind of moves that forward to say, okay, Rather than look at days or potentially weeks, how do I um, how do I actually look at revenue to market in terms of um, you know hours uh, or less than a day? And then um, finally, if we look at customer SAT, um, we look at you know the current situation, which could affect 
brand value, you know, so where you have service interruptions and things of that nature. Um, the future state really moves away from that reactive approach to more of a proactive approach where you're saying, okay, customers may not be aware of any service impacting events um, through the deployment of active assurance and zero touch automated assurance uh, because we're, you know, we're able to detect any service impacting events and then actually reconfigure uh, the network infrastructure before the customer even is aware uh, of any uh, any potential problem. So I want to conclude um, around the economic impacts, and this is some data we actually published uh, about a year or so ago on you know what is the opportunity in front of most service providers. If you look at the global expenditures in a telecom market for operational and capital investments, um, it's forecasted, we're forecasting it at US dollars, $1.68 trillion in 2025. Um, you know, and a large part of that is on the OPEX side. So what, what the automation software market brings to the table is the ability to actually reduce the spend um, in OPEX, um, which is quite high right now. And then as service providers enter this technology upgrade cycle for things like 5G and virtualization of the infrastructure, we would see a fundamental shift in uh, software that would be more of your traditional or legacy-based OSS and BSS um, products to one that is more fully automated. Uh, so your, your, your newer modern software that gets deployed um, will be capable of managing more dynamic workloads. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Cyril to look at specifically the business outcomes and the economic benefits achieved through zero-touch automation and deployments in SD-WAN and transport, where um, he's, he's actually got hard data uh, and some of the results to report to you, and also how that's being implemented today. Over to you, Thanks, sir. Patrick. So, yeah, thank you. That was a. So after that great overview of the market and where we stand, we're gonna we're gonna um, review what a, a modern solution can bring. And so here, um, in the last 20 years, we've been focusing on doing post-mortem analysis of bad network performance, with what what Patrick um, expressed uh, at the beginning of the the webcast. And and customers have complained about unhealthy networks. And all we've done is to root cause the issue and then hope that problems will never come back. So with Netrons, um, as a health coach would do with his team, you can first make sure the network is right the first time, and you can continually test your network service health. So you can diagnose what needs to be changed, so you never have to go back in the coroner's room. And so for that webcast specifically here today, I wanted to start, we're talking here about zero touch testing, and I wanted to start by sharing what a typical engineer, prior to onboard a customer, what do they have to do? What do they have to test in their network? And so for the modern services, there's actually a lot of things to test. You need to make sure that your routing um, it works fine, that, uh, that the routing is con configured correctly. You need to make sure that the QS profiling is okay. You need to make sure that there's no QS bleaching. Today, we're using a lot of partners' network. We need to make sure that all the partners' network are delivering upon their SLAs. And when prior to open the service, uh, there are specific tests that have to be done for, depending on the, the size of the packets that are tr going through the network. You, you need to make sure that security gateways are well configured. So if you're offering connectivity, and on top of connectivity, you also have additional services, like the VoIP services on our Office 365 services, you also want to make sure that those services are working properly. And let's say that one of the tests um, fails. Let's, as an example, we do a lot of testing, we're testing the throughput, and we're trying to make sure that everything works correctly. Basically, you, you can't onboard your customer. And one of the reality checks today is actually why it's quite complex to make sure that we can onboard customer. Uh, those tests are not done. 
most of the CSP, we've, we've done some uh, interviews with various executives in a number of CSPs, and most of them are, are telling us that today they, they don't do much testing. Sometimes they've developed specific applications that do kind of single things, and when they have high-value customer, they're going to send teams on site, and though there's a lot of truck roll, and as Patrick mentioned, truck roll is expensive. And so why that hasn't been um, done in the past? And the, the primary answer is that there's no, they're not aware, we, the industry is not aware of cost-efficient solutions. So prior to continue, we're going to talk about those cost-efficient solutions, but we just wanted to see here in the audience um, where you're lacking visibility. And so, uh, Anna, I'm going to hand over to you for that question. All right. Thank you, Cyril. Um, so, yeah, this brings us to our second poll question for today. Um, so the question is, in which domains do you lack visibility today? Um, the options we have are applications hosted in private clouds, virtual desktop solutions, services offered as SaaS, uh, Office 365, data centers, SD1, L3, L2 VPNs, 5G transport network, third party provider networks, so off-net networks, or all of the above. I'll just give you all a few more seconds. And just to get your votes in, I can see some of you have been voting already. Um, whilst you do, just wait for the audience to get their votes in. Cyril, do you have any expectations about um, which domain is going to come out on top? So maybe um, <clears throat> I don't want to influence the audience, but uh, I, <laughs> I would think that um, it's the newer services like SD1, and um, it mm -hmm. could be all of the above, actually. Okay, well, let's find out. Okay, so Cyril, oh, yes. you were right. <laughs> All of the above. Um, definitely in the lead there with almost 42%. Um, and then kind of we have some joint seconds, so 5G transport, third-party third provider networks, and applications hosted in private clouds. Um, Patrick, what do you think of, of these results? Are they as expected? Yeah, a couple, couple of things come out for me. And um, I mean, there, there were a lot of, first of all, there were a lot of choices, right? So uh, you'd expect mm -hmm. to see somewhat of a widespread. But um, yeah, you see all of the above, right? So people voting for all of the above uh, indicate that, as Cyril pointed out, um, a lot of the focus is on new services that will get deployed in the operator's environment over the next year or two. And as I mentioned, SD-WAN um, is well along uh, the adoption phase for, for many service providers. One of the other things that I find interesting here is 11.1% um, third-party providers network, off-net networks. Um, this sort of speaks to the visibility issue, um, which is, I think most operators have um, have really instrumented the network to understand the domains that they control, but once it moves outside their own domain, there is a lack of visibility. So it's sort of this visibility issue that uh, Cyril pointed out earlier uh, and actually showed up in the first question um, where you go off net or potentially in a partner's network and you, you have that lack of visibility. So, you know, if you're if you're worried about customer SAT and you're worried about end-to-end -end, uh, multi-domain visibility, um, that, that seems to be high on, uh, on people's minds. Okay, great. So, Cyril, back to you. Yeah, thank you. So, now we're going to see what is a cost-efficient solution to tackle that issue and to give the visibility in actually all of the domain that were mentioned here. So the, the, the solution to actually confirm service quality cost efficiently is to run active traffic on the data plane, to, so to run synthetic transactions as if you are an end user. And it's actually the only way to spot uh, all those problems in, in the chain. And we're, we're gonna, I'm going to provide some more examples here. But to do this, you simply need some um, active testing agents. 
And the good news is that you can also leverage reflector technology that is already installed in your network. The key here is to have a tiny footprint agent, and also I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a bit more about that. But if you have, if you run um, synthetic transaction in your network as an end user, you're gonna be able to understand what's the one-way delay and jitter end-to-end, -end, and for each of the network segments, you're gonna be able to understand what is uh, if your underlay network, the various underlay that you have supports your SD1 service. You will understand if QoS is configured correctly. You're gonna be able to understand if the firewalls are not impacting the ability of the end user to connect to a specific service. Uh, and the key to, um, to make it cost efficient is to have those, as I said, those tiny footprint agents. And today, because we are virtualizing networks, there is a lot of location in our networks where those agents can be deployed automatically. So at the edge, we're building compute. And if you have an SD1 service, a UCP service, if you're heading toward mobile edge computing, you're gonna be able to have a VNF installed automat automatically at the edge of your network. Also, there are some um, vendors such, a, such as Cisco that, that give you the ability to run application on their equipment. So if you have an iOS XR XE, you, it supports Docker container. So if you have an agent that can be shipped as a Docker, such as the one that Netrans provides, also those agents can be automatically installed on the equipment. And last, you, you, we, we have a lot of um, opportunities in the cloud to install those agents. It could be in your private cloud, it could be in your public cloud. And most of you on the call are building telco clouds here and there in the, in the network. So those agents can now be installed and distributed computing is really the solution enabler. But it's also important to see that uh, not only it fixed that problem that no one has fixed uh, or, or took the time to fix because it was expensive, it also gives the opportunity to prepare, to, to make sure that we are ready to manage uh, virtualized networks. And so when you have a virtual network, you, in a compute node, you might have several VNFs that are chained together. And if you were to have one of those agents, it gives you the opportunity to actually test each service for each client and to make sure that when you go through that chain, you do have the characteristic that you need for your client or for a specific service. And if it was not the case, you can actually run like those synthetic transactions through each of the VNS and you can locate issues. And today, we cannot do this manually any longer. There's, there's two reasons why it's gonna be time consuming, high OPEX. And the second reason is if several engineers do the same test on different computes, there's not going to be, um, the result might differ. And at the end of the day, there's not going to be the consistency that you need to be able to compare and to make sure that everything is running fine. So we, we, we have a solution. We, we heard the problem from Patrick. Um, there is a solution. And the key is to understand how can we deploy it most efficiently. And so there's actually three easy steps to do that. Uh, for sure, you need the right platform. So a platform like Netrons gives you the ability to test um, any kind of services. So it has uh, a number of tests. For example, if you want to test VoIP, you've got uh, the ability to test the MOS. If you have a layer three, you're gonna have Y1731 tests. If you want to test Office 365, you're gonna have uh, some HTTP tests that give you the ability to test the reachability to, um, to a manager of C365. But here, as we've seen at the beginning, there are so many different combinations and, 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 and tests that has to be done. So what is key is to have templates, but to aggregate each of those tests and to have the ability to run a sequence, what we call a test template, but a sequence um, that basically will validate that a service is working for a given customer. 
And, and the good news is when you have a platform such as Netfonds, when you have the plumbing, you've, you've, you've integrated the platform in your, in your stack, it doesn't really matter which, which test you want to run. Uh, and so once again, it's one solution, one platform for all your services. So um, prior to when you're designing a service, a design phase, you can then create the test template. And here, that's an example for connectivity. You might want in your case to do a pass and to discovery. You might want to test DSCP bleaching, an internet access, do some load testing, QoS profiling. And, and here, that's, that's the first test that you, 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 might, you might want to run on, 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 on your service. But let's say that you have a void service. At the same time, when you do the, your load testing, you might want to run five voice calls. And that will give you the ability to make sure that also connectivity is established and works well for that void service. You could do the same with Office 365. So, and a platform like Netron, what, what it does, what, offer, what our customers are actually telling us is it, it's really simple. It's drag and drop, and you can construct your tests that are adapted to your, to, to your business, actually, very easily. And so what are those three easy steps to, to, to do that integration uh, in your existing ecosystem? The first one is to enable zero-touch deployment of the agents. So as, as I've mentioned before, the key for such a solution is to have a uh, software-only platform uh, with, 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 with an agent with, that has a very a tiny footprint, so it can be in, in, installed on the various computers available in the network. And so your service orchestrator, from um, connecting to the service catalog, can get that service descriptor and can automatically install the agent when, where you need them in the network. Then the second step is to configure those agents. Every service is different. Every customer is different. Is different. The test that you're going to have to do depend on what your sales team have sold their customer. But actually, through APIs, by integrating with either the service orchestrator or with the, your service activation solution, you can fully automate that process. And, and therefore, there's really a, no cost associated with doing the testing. And the last step is then to activate um, those tests when needs be. And here, there's really um, two, two categories of tests that can be done. So when we're talking about zero-touch testing, what you want to do is load testing prior to onboard a customer. But then you can also use the same platform to continuously test the service after you onboarded the customer to make sure that SLAs are delivered as a uh, that, that's um, a strong need as well that uh, Patrick uh, mentioned at the beginning. And so here, um, once that platform is in place and one it has been integrated in your network, and uh, as you could see, it's, uh, we, we call it straightforward. That solution can be installed actually very quickly. There's a, a number of people in your organization that uh, can benefit from such solution. The first one is going to be the service delivery team. The service delivery team, now they have automatically, they have birth certificate. As soon as connectivity has been established, they have the birth certificate for a given client. They can decide with that data, can I onboard my client? Will it be satisfied or should I pause? Because there is something that has to be fixed. And so if there's something that needs to be fixed, they can call service operation, sometimes it's the engineering team, depending on the organization. And the engineering or operation can connect to such platform and run some additional testing to locate issues. The issues could be located somewhere in the end-to-end -end chain, in a partner network. Um, it, it could be on, on, on the virtualization stack. And so they can then discuss with their team, fix the problem, and then they know they can onboard the customer, and the customer will have um, the, the SLAs that they, they, they've purchased. But here, it doesn't stop here, because when the customer is onboarded, often they have their own issues. 
they, in their own network or with other service providers, they could have issue and, and they could think that basically the problems come from a specific service provider, the service that you just um, deliver to them. If you have that framework, if you have, if you have such that platform in place, that such solution, actually the customer can even do self-diagnostic. They can even connect straight to um, the, 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 the agents and do the self-diagnostic. And therefore, it, it, um, it tells you that the service is working and, and there's no blaming game any longer. If you have to find something else, you're going to fix it. But in, in many, many times, you're losing a lot of time by, by trying to identify to solve problems that do not exist. So to, to illustrate all of this, uh, I wanted to add on a success story with a tier one service provider. We have many others, but I think this one illustrates ex extremely well that zero touch testing and what we can do um, use case and what we can do with zero touch testing. So here the, we, we have a global service provider delivering um, uh, connect, the connectivity all around the world. And they had to send people on site. It was expensive. Um, they also sometimes had problems that they had to locate and it was taking them time. And so with Netron's, uh, what they've done is they have four locations in the world, uh, telco cloud location, where agents are automatically installed. And through those four locations, they are testing that global network. They're able to understand if service levels are, are acceptable and, and to see if they can onboard customer. If they have an issue, they're going to locate that issue in their network, and as we said, it can be configuration issue, QoS issue, QoS bleaching, a lot of different problems that the solution will spot. And at the end, if there's a problem in a partner network, they're able to um, open a communication with the partner network, show them the report, and ask them to basically fix that problem that is impacting them. And in that, specific case. So when they had a problem with partner network, and you know, like many of you here, we have a lot of partners network. And when they had a problem with a partner network, it used to take them five days just to locate the issue, not even to fix it. Five days to locate, then they have to open a discussion with the partner network, explain that there's a problem on their network, and then fix it. With Netrons, it takes two hours to do this. So Imagine a client waiting for five days and they cannot be onboarded. In two days, we find the issue, then we solve it in few few additional hours. So as a result, they are able first to build customer earlier. But they've also been able to reduce by 15% their service delivery, they delivery failure rate. So it used to be that they were onboarding customer and on services that were not properly tested, and then the customer, the first thing that, that, that happens to that customer is that uh, they can't use the service. So uh, it usually leads to churn down the road. And then they were able to reduce by 10% their total service delivery OPEX. And what they told us here, it's, um, even if savings are very important, it's more the time that they saved with the truck hole and everything. And, and, and now they can, they can refocus their team in solving bigger problems in their core network. They, they, they are not wasting time any longer. And so that's, uh, that, that has been a, a game changer for them. So that, that's uh, the end of the presentation here, but I uh, wanted just to finish on that slide. Um, so with Netrons, basically you can be right the first time, all the time and every time. Today we talked about automated activation testing. Uh, the same solution can be used also for the operation and to provide real quality monitoring to the operation. And last, it can also be used in a closed loop scenario. As we've seen in, in, in Patrick's vision of the market, the end game is closed loop automation. But to do proper closed loop automation, you, you, you actually need the right feedback loop. You, you need the right service quality measurement 
to enable that feedback loop. So that, those are also things that we can do, even if today we focus on automating activation testing. And if you want to know more, just simply go to uh, our website, netfront.com. The, the case study um, that I've talked about, we have a whole white paper on this. So if you're a service delivery team and you want to replicate what has been done, um, you, 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 you find all the information there. Um, if you're more in the operation and the, in the SOC and you find that sometimes it's your customers that are finding the problems, then we also have another great, great white paper that is called Service Assurance Time to Abandon the Geocentric Model, where it does explain um, why we need to change our frame of reference and to go towards end-to-end um, -to -end service quality. And it, it, it's, it's very interesting. I encourage everyone to read it. And last, uh, our CTO in two weeks will be speaking at the Cisco uh, Developer Days. And on the same team, but it will go a bit uh, deeper, providing more information about uh, the technology and the way we integrate our APIs and so on. So, if you're a network architect, head of OSS or CTO, I think you'll you like as well uh, very much that, um, that uh, presentation here. So, th thank you, everyone. Hope that, that this was um, interesting for you. And maybe, Patrick, do you want to say a, a last word and maybe a something about uh, Apple Door Research as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for those joining the call, if anybody is interested in some of the work that we've done, um, not only around zero touch, but also more broadly in the automation domain um, and intent-based networking, um, check us out at uh, appledoorresearch.com. Okay, well, thank you both for a great presentation. Um, I'm sure everyone has questions in the audience, so if you do, please use the Q&A widget um, and send your questions in to Patrick and Cyril, and we will try our best to answer them. Um, so let's get started with the Q&A, as we do have some questions in already. Um, so the first question we have here is, how will the SP service orchestrator reach the partner network edge router to automate deployment of the agent? We would like to, to start with that. So I can take this one. So actually what, what we do is we, we, we test the service end-to-one -end and, and we use reflector technology that are at the edge of the partner network. So then by understanding the performance end-to-end -end and the performance in each of the segments, we can locate that the problem comes from that partner network. Okay. Um, the next question we have is, um, do the reflectors need to be installed on provider edge equipment? Most of the time, they're, they're already there. So they don't need to be installed. They're, they're, they're part of the, the reflector technology um, are usually here in the network already. Like for example, for Y1731 or others, so you, you do have a lot of the equipment provider provide that capability already. Mm -hmm. Patrick, do you have anything to add? Uh, I, I, yeah, I think um, it's more in Cyril's uh, camp, just on the implementation <laughs> side, so I'll, I'll keep it to Cyril. No problem. Um, okay, another question here. Um, Cyril, this one might be for you as well. Um, is the solution agnostic to underlying transport technologies? Yes, yes it is. Okay. So, lots of questions coming in now. So, if people do have questions, remember to get them in. If we don't get to speak to you, or if we don't get to answer your question today, we may follow up via email. So, do send them in, um, and we will do our best to get back to you. Uh, so, the next question we have here is, uh, what do you think will be the new requirements from active monitoring for the industry 4.0 use cases? Yeah, I can take that, sir, if you want. Um, yeah, there's been there's been a lot of discussion around uh, 
industry 4.0. Um, and that's, you know, a lot of it is reliant on uh, this move towards uh, digital, the use of digital technology. Um, one of the things that we're looking at, is, and again, um, there's adjacent industries. So if you look at the manufacturing industry or industrial automation and the use of IoT, you know, uh, and, and how the telco fits in there, um, you know, we, we sort of, uh, we kind of look at this from an active test. Um, you're going to apply some of the same processes that we've been talking about in, in service providers' own internal networks, um, but then you have to extend that potentially into the private network, uh, you know, potentially into partners' networks. Um, Cyril, you can, um, I, I guess you can comment in this area. I mean, I don't believe there's any um, constraints or limitations um, with the use of NetRound technology um, to, to apply that uh, either in a private uh, network environment, or uh, quite frankly, if you're if you're doing a, a, you know more of an exchange-based network, I'll I'll let you weigh in on that. Yes, no, there, there's no there's no um, uh, any limitation in that regard. I think Why? there there's another interesting question on on the um, the zero touch. Um, can I achieve zero touch deployment if my network is not fully virtualized? And uh, and here, I think you you can really uh, the interesting piece about such a solution is that not only it is a great solution for virtualized based network, but you you actually can use it with more legacy networks. You might not be able to uh, deploy the agent automatically, but you can still configure the solution automatically, configure the test and the agent automatically, and therefore still have a lot of OPEX settings. Okay. Yeah, there's also, uh, Cyril, there's also a question that, I, that I just um, came in. Uh, in summary, the test agents need to be modeled in the service descriptor itself. How can it be done? Where, what scenarios are dynamic in nature? Um, let's say it's intent-based. Um, I just want to comment on the, the intent-based nature because I think, again, that's uh, it's something that's been kicked around in our industry for the last year or so. Um, the whole notion of intent is really, you know, what what is the outcome for, you know, in this case, if you're doing an, if you're deploying an SD-WAN service, uh, uh, what what is the intended outcome, and really trying to allow uh, if you properly instrument the service descriptors and the models um, and you have this uh, as a shared data model across um, not only your uh, zero, touch, zero touch test systems, but also in the orchestration systems, you know, potentially in your inventory systems, um, a lot of the um, implementation um, would occur in the systems that you've developed. You, you've, designed and deployed and and take a lot of that burden if you will away from the operator so for example if you uh, if you're looking to meet certain KPI metrics um, you know the system makes the call if, if that um, you know if, if those if, if there's a problem uh, at that point uh, then there needs to be some sort of coordination uh, through the uh, domain level managers um, on a resolution and, and uh, to, to successfully execute against that. So uh, the whole notion around intent based networking is to, you know, remove a lot of the complexity from the operator and allow the, uh, you know, the, the coders uh, and, um, you know, essentially allowing those multiple layers uh, that have better knowledge um, of the resources available uh, that can meet those uh, SLAs and KPIs uh, to be deployed uh, successfully in the environment. So I think, you know, that uh, that's still an ongoing, you know, from a development point of view, that's that's a still uh, ongoing in the market today. Uh, but that's 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 really the notion, if you will, of uh, intent-based network. I, I think Cyril, maybe you want to you want to comment uh, perhaps on the NetRound side and how NetRounds plays in, 
you know, from a test uh, testing agent perspective uh, around intent-based networking. Yeah, I, I do agree, and I think um, when you you um, it's it's really part of the DevOps engineering cycle. Um, when you are designing your service, that is where basically in the service descriptor, you just need to think about how you are going to want to test that service, and, and so everything starts um, at, the, at, the, at the design phase, and and basically then can evolve with the needs. All right, thank you both. Um, we have more questions coming in, so let's try and get through as many as we can with the time remaining. So next up, we have a question. Is Kubernetes deployment supported? And so the answer is yes, it is supported. And we actually have a, a blog post that was posted, I think, two days ago on that topic. So if you go to our website, and Anders, who is our uh, VP on um, product management, has a great uh, explanation on how we support uh, Kubernetes. All right, thank you. Um, another question here, can I achieve zero touch deployment if my network is not fully virtualized? Well, I, so I don't I, believe so that any operators network is going to be fully virtualized. So uh, the, the notion that networks are, are going to be fully virtualized is, is not the case. Um, it, there'll, there'll always be hybrid network. You can't virtualize fiber, for example. So I think most service providers need to design for a hybrid network. You, you, you will have uh, um, physical uh, network resources, uh, and you also have virtual resources. Um, I think zero net rounds, uh, you know, will work in um, in both environments. I.e., you, you would satisfy the hybrid uh, hybrid environment with your solution. Yes, definitely. And and we can even um, do some level of testing automation in, in a service that is that is where there's no virtualization at all. Um, we, we'll have to install the agents somewhere, maybe in an appliance. Maybe it could be a Raspberry Pi, for example. So we, we can also support those environments. Um, now, when we talk about automation, when you're starting to virtualize your network, that, that is where it's, it can be then done at scale very easily. So it helps. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, next question we have here is, in the case of edge use cases, which are latency sensitive, wouldn't the test agents introduce a tiny latency of their own? So they, they actually won't, because we what we are doing is is um, we, we are sending very small packets on the data plane, and th there's two type of tests. If, when you do testing, if you it's before you onboard the customer, you're, you're going to do load testing, and so here you're going to make sure that make sure that the service is going to be working when the customer will, will onboard. But then, when the customer has been onboarded, you already know that the service should be working. You're still going to continue to test it, but then it's a different um, uh, test that we are doing and those that, are with, uh, that, that don't impact that latency at all. Okay, um, next. Up, we have uh, one of your slides mentioned a HTML5 test agent. Can you talk about that and what it can do compared to a normal test agent? So here it gives the uh, ability for an end user. So let's say that uh, you have a connectivity service. Uh, let's say, for example, you have remote workers. We have a lot of remote workers today. And so that remote worker would be able to connect to a portal and basically test the, the connectivity to the test agent and as well look at um, the performance in a location wherever you've installed your test agent. So it gives visibility to your end customer. And that is great because you, you sometimes they have issues in their own networks. And by doing this, you cut the blending game if they're choosing their own network by, by um, 
leveraging that uh, that capability, they're going to be able to understand that your service is is working fine, and so they, they will look for the problem somewhere else. Okay, thank you, Cyril. Um, just for the audience, um, I am now actually pushing out a survey, um, so it should pop open on your screen. Um, make sure you don't have an ad blocker on your browser or anything. Um, and if you could just take a, a minute or so just to fill that in, your feedback is extremely helpful and it will help us to improve um, on our future webinars. Um, so next up, in terms of questions, we have one here. Um, if, we plan on, if we plan to use X testing for testing from dev to ops, how can we interact with your solution? So, so here I would have to refer more to a, a solution architect. And I think um, th there are so many other questions here on the webcast today. So uh, don't, don't hesitate to really uh, reach out to us. Um, we would we, love to help you with your projects and, and to see how we can, we can help you implement that, that automation testing. I'm not familiar with that, that, that solution myself. So um, I, um, but we're very happy to or engage in a conversation. Right. Um, next up, we have a question here. What if the reflector agents are not there on edge equipment? Who would like to take that one? So I can take it. So if 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 that's a compute edge, we then install our own agents, and um, or we we make sure that the the vendor they're they're, they're providing the right uh, the right reflection technology. Most of the time it is here, but once again, so there, there's two uh, deployment model. You all you you can install the agent centralized, and then do the testing with the reflector on your network. Or you can actually deploy the agent everywhere on your network automatically if your network supports it. So we, we, we have a software only solution. And so if you look, for example, you might have heard the, 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 there's another use case that is a Rakuten that is building their, their software only network. There was a press release from Netrons. Uh, and their choice is to deploy the agent automatically in every node. So here you have the best coverage but it really depends on the maturity of your network and where you are in your journey towards virtualization. There's always solutions. So here we'll find, uh, once again, for those more specific cases, don't hesitate to come back to us and we will be glad to, to, to help. Cyril, somebody had commented, um, I, the question went away, but I saw it earlier. Um, was in, was in the session around SD WAN. Like uh, I guess they're they're alluding to the fact they they were expecting a little bit more SD WAN. I'm wondering if you can kind of help the audience understand the architecture um, where you have VTAs deployed. Um, I'm assuming you're somewhat technology agnostic, and then you just kind of build into the test harness whatever services or applications need to be deployed. But um, you do have some flexibility there. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, exactly. We are completely technology agnostic. And, and in the case of an SD1, what you want to do is you want to make sure you test the service. So as if you're the end user using that, that uh, connectivity, making sure that it has the right uh, characteristic. And you need also to make sure that you test each of the underlay networks that support the service. Uh, you, 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 the service might go through uh, the in internet. You might have a, like a layer two or a layer three VPN that supports it. You might have uh, 5G. So you want to make sure that each of those connectivity are performing. So if there's um, some some um, basically uh, adjustment in the path that needs to be done, then then the quality will remain and will be delivered. And so once the, the, the short answer it's uh, yeah, testing the, the, the service as, as the overlay and testing each underlay networks. And you're right, we're, we're fully agnostic here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
One other question, Sarah, right. uh, that I think, again, I'm just kind of scrolling through. I think we missed um, more of a technical question. How is it different from uh, Y.1564 and RFC 2544, which um, you can probably address? Um, so I don't know myself the detail on this one. Um, so I, I won't, um, but I will answer the, we, we, we can see who's asked that question. So okay, I'll make yeah, sure you can do it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe do a follow-up. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that does actually bring us um, to the top of the hour. So unfortunately, we have run out of time. Um, if we didn't manage to answer your question today, we will do our best to follow up via email. So do keep an eye out for that. Um, all that's left to do is just to thank our two amazing presenters today. So Patrick Kelly, thank you so much. And of course, Cyril um, do so as well. Um, we hope to see you again on a future webinar. Um, have a great day and stay safe. Thank you.